Okay, so can we start? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so today we are going to discuss some important topic related to the operator. But before that, first we will discuss our one data type and after that we will go for the operator. Okay. Okay, so in the previous class we have already discussed if you are going to create any variables, then first we have to write the data type. Okay, so first we are going to write the data type. Basically, we have discussed about the three or four different data types. One is called the integer, second one is called the character, and third one is called the float. Okay, after that you can also create sort integer that we have already discussed, sort integer, long integer. Then you can also create long, long integer. Then you can also create double, long double. You can create these are the different types of data type. First one, your integer, normal integer, character, flow. Then you can write the short integer, long integer, long, long integer, double, and long double. Okay. If you are not writing anything before this data type, then they will consider a signed data type. Means basically used to represent both positive and negative number basically used to represent both positive and negative number but when you are writing the unsigned unsigned integer unsigned integer a that is only used to represent positive number that we have already discussed in the previous class that we have already discussed in the previous class okay now today we will discuss what the how to create one data type how to create one data type and the rest we will discuss after the function that is also called the structure and union. You can create your own data type. Okay. Now assume that someone will ask you what is the area of circle? Anyone? What is the area of circle? Anyone? Pi R square. Pi R square. So first basically what we are saying like that? We are saying pi r into r we are not saying like that 3.14 into r into r we are not saying like that most of the time if someone will ask you directly we are saying that pi r square so in the program if you are going to write this one it become more easy to understand if you are writing the pi r square it become more easy to understand as compared to if you are writing 3.14 into r into r then in this case basically what we are going to do before that, before starting of the program, we are going to define one values. So we are writing as define pi 3.14. Okay. So before the program means after the hash include studio.h, what we are writing has defined pi equal to 3.14. So what will happen like that? Whenever you are going to use pi, then it will simply it will replace the pi with it. 3.14. So where you are going to use the PI, it will simply replace with 3.14. Simply it will replace with 3.14. Where you are going to use the PI. Okay. So directly you can write the formula PI means pi r square. And after that, when you are going to compile the program, what will happen like that? Where the PI is per gen, it will simply replace with 3.14. Simply replace with 3.14. And here basically we are not writing any equal sign. Here we will not write any equal sign. Simply write has defined PI 3.14. Has defined PI 3.14. And this is also called the macro definition. This is also called the micro definition. Okay. This is also called the micro definition. If you are writing the PI equal to 2 plus 2, simply it will replace with the 2 plus 2. Simply it will replace with the 2 plus 2. What I am saying like that, just you can see, if you are writing here, has defined PI and then you are writing 2 plus 2. Okay. And after that, if you are going to find the value of PI into PI, what value it will give anyone? What value it will give? If you are writing PI into PI, what value it will give? 
give it will simply replace with 2 plus 2 into 2 plus 2 what is the value of this expression anyone what is the value of this expression anyone hey. so 2 plus 2 you will get 4 4 plus 2 6 6 plus 2 8 is the right answer. how we are calculating this is the board mass medium we will use the formula formula so 2 into 2 plus 2 what is the value we will get 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 2 8 so what what do you mean by that it is not evaluating means it is not finding the value of the expression directly it will write directly it will write the pi so pi simply will write 2 plus 2 same like that if you are writing pi bracket into pi what is the value we will get pi bracket into pi what is the value we will get 16 what is the value we will get 16 Blindly you cannot give the value. Blindly you cannot give the value. Okay. How can the expression? 2 plus 2 into 2 plus 2. Can you tell me what is the value we'll get? What is the value we'll get? 2 plus 2, 4, 4 into 2, 8, 8 plus 2, 10 is the right answer. 16 is not the right answer. Blindly never you will give the value. Okay, what I have mentioned like that. Where you are defining the hash pi 2 plus 2, whatever you are going to write, where pi, simply it will replace pi with 2 plus 2. It will not find the value of the expression. Directly it will put the pi equal to 2 plus 2. Same like that now I do that. If you are writing here, uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2, something like that. And if you are writing pi plus pi into pi, can you tell me what the value we get? Anyone? So what is the meaning of pi? Simply it will write 2 plus 2 plus 2. Okay. Then we are writing again pi 2 plus 2 plus 2. Again you are writing pi into 2 plus 2 plus 2. What is the value of this expression? First we will find the value of the brackets. What is the value we will get? 4, 4 plus 2 here we are getting. Again here we are getting what value? 4, 4 plus 2 here get into 4 plus 2. What is the value we will get? 4 plus 2, 4 into 2 we will get 8. What is the value we are getting? 4 plus 2, 6. 6 plus 4, 10. 10 plus 8, 18. 18 plus 2, 20 is the right answer. Okay. So, in this case, 20 is the right answer. Clear? 20 is the right answer. So, where you are using the PI, simply it will replace the PI. Simply it will replace the PI. Okay. Now, one student is asking, why not we can write the float, float, PI equal to 3.14. You can also write this value. There is no any problem with that. But if you are going to define this float as a variable, that in this case, this float has some scope. This float has some scope that we have already discussed in the previous class. So by default, this is an auto variable. And what is the scope of auto variable? You can only use inside this brasses. You cannot use outside the brasses. You cannot use outside the brasses. If you are going to define the declare the variable inside the brasses, you can only use inside the brasses. You cannot write outside the brasses. This is the first point. What is the lifetime? When you are coming out from the brasses, this variable is automatically going to delete it. But our objective is to use throughout the program. So if you are going to define globally, then that is also fine. If you are going to define globally, that is also fine. Okay. Now, now I'm going to discuss for some important point that is called the user defined at that time. So as for example, in this case, we are going only going for the one variable. Okay. Only we are going for the pi. But now assume that if you are going for the more than one variable, if you are going for the more than one constant. So as for example, if you are taking the weekday and weekday, basically you are taking the Sunday means you are taking zero. Monday means you are taking one. And Tuesday, basically these are the constant value you are going to assign to the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, something like that. So basically you are assigning some constant value. And in throughout the program, when you are getting the Sunday, simply you have to replace with zero. When you are getting Monday, simply you have to replace with one. Means basically it will represent the weekday. Basically it will represent the weekday. So in this case, basically we are going to use the enum. So enum is basically used to assign some constant value to the variable. Okay. What is the syntax? Simply we are writing enum. Then your data type name. What types of data you are going to create? So here we are writing the enum day. Day become your data type. Just you can see enum day. And after that we are writing Monday, Tuesday, whatever the value we are going to write here. By default, by default, try to understand. This is very important. By default, it will store 0 to the Monday. It will assign one constant value Tuesday to 1. Wednesday to 2 and same like that, it will, it will increment the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. Okay. 
Now, when we are going to use Monday, simply it will print the value zero. When we are going to use Tuesday, it will print the value one. So, as for example, just you can see, we are going to write one simple program. So, at least you will get the idea. Just you can see. So, here we are writing this enum variable. What we are writing? Enum week equal to these are the value we are writing here. Okay. What will happen like that? Automatically, it will assign some value. Monday means zero, Tuesday means one, Wednesday means two, something like that. So if you are going to write, we are going to create one variable of type enum week. Just you can see, this is a data type, same like that integer day. Here we are writing enum week day. And if you are writing Wednesday, and after that, if you are going to print the value, print a percentile d, comma, day. and it will print the value, just you can see, print a percentile d, comma, day. Then it will print the value of two. Just you can see two means this one is zero, one, two. So basically used to assign some constant value. So as for example, where we will use, try to understand where we will use. So now assume that if you are getting one requirement, simple like that, you are getting one requirement for month. Okay. So now we'll ask the user to enter the month, month, enter the month number. Okay. Zero means January, one means February, something like that. So we'll ask the user, user to enter the month number and based on that, we are going to print the value. Based on that, we are going to print the value number of days per in the month. Based on that, we are going to print the value number of days per in the month. Okay. Now, in this case, just you can see, in this case, what will happen? In this case, if you are going to write here, Jan, then here if you are writing something like that, a no month. Now, assume that your data type name is your, here we are writing big. Now, assume that if you have defined the next data type that is called the month, then here you can write simply in a month, month equal to if you are writing January means definitely it will consider as a first value. Definitely it will consider as a one. Okay. So either you will write directly one, two, three, four, five, or you can directly use the month name. Directly you can use the month. Same like that here, you can also write 0, 1, 2, 3. But when you are writing here weekday equal to Wednesday, this one become more easy to understand as compared to if we are writing int day equal to 2. Int day equal to 2. And if you are writing this one, then definitely the first one is more easy to understand as compared to int day equal to 2. So when you are writing int day equal to 2, then in this case, you cannot specify what day we are going to prefer. Okay. So basically, in this scenario, basically, we are using the enum data type. This is also called the user defined data type. We are defining our own data type. What we are writing here? In a week, and then we are writing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever the weekday are there, we are going to create here. Okay. After that, you can create any variable of this data type. After that, it will create any variable of this data type. Just you can see one by one, you can see. First one, what is the use of enum? Basically, used to assign some constant value to the words. Okay. So here basically we are going to assign Monday to zero, Tuesday to one, Wednesday to Two, by default, it will start from zero. By default, it will start from zero. Zero, one, two, three, something like that. Okay. Now, after that, the next important point, just you can see the next important point. This is a data type. This is a data type. What do you mean by that? You can also define inside the scope. Same like that, your auto variable. Same like that, auto. So if you are going to define the enum variable inside this scope, then you cannot use outside the scope. Just you can see, if you are going to define here, and after that again, if you are going to use, you cannot use this variable. Because this, this one will come under the auto type. By default, if you are going to write, this one will come under the auto type. Okay, because we are creating one user defined data type. This is the first point. By default, it will start from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, you can also change the order. You can also change the order. So, as for example, now do that. Here you can see first what value it is printing. Just you can see. After that, we'll see. Just you can see. It is printing 2. Why it is printing 2? Because it is starting with 0, 1, and 2. You can also change the value. You can also change the order. So, as for example, now we do that we are going to give the value. And here you can only give the integer constant value. We cannot use the any real number. You can only give the integer constant value. Only integer constant value. Or you can also say like that the character constant value. Because character is similar to the integer. Okay. Now, here you can see. 
Fft equal to if you are writing 3, after that it will start the number 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Means after that the next value will start from 4, 5, 6. So basically it will follow some sequence. So just you can see we are getting 4 here. We are getting 4. So what will happen like that? If you are going to print for Monday, by default it is 0. Now here it is coming, it will assign 3 to the Tuesday. And after that the next, all the value become 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Now. It is similar to the macro function. Here you can also write has defined Monday equal to 0. But now try to understand. If you are going to define has defined Monday equal to 0, means that is valid. Try to understand. That is one important point. This is the most important point. Okay. We can assign. We can assign here 1. We can assign 2. Any value we can assign. Just you can see. We can assign 1. There is no any problem. This value is coming. Here you can also assign 10. If you are going to assign 10, can you tell me what is the value of Friday? Anyone, what is the value of Friday? If you have to assign 10, what is the value of Friday? 11. Just you can see, it will print the value 11. Compile and run, it will print the value 11. Just you can see, it will print the value 11. Okay. Now it will. So is there any way to print the name of the thing, sir? Like if I say, if I try to say it is 3, it should print Tuesday. Like that Tuesday. Is it worth? Yes. If you are writing here Tuesday, it will print the value. Basically, it will print the constant value. Reverse is not possible. Basically, based on this value, we are assigning some constant value. We are assigning some constant value. Okay. Yes, you can assign the same value yes. for more than two times. You can assign the same value for more than two times. Just you can see if we are assigning the same value. There is no any problem. Both are same. Tuesday and Wednesday, both are same. If you are going to print both, it will come the same value. You can assign the same value. Okay, you can assign the same value. Just you can see, it will come to three. Okay, now what is the difference between some students are confused in the micro function and user defined function? Okay, user defined data. So now assume that if you are writing the micro definition, try to understand. If you are writing the micro definition, okay, has defined defined Monday one. We are writing here one something like that. Okay. Same thing we are writing has to find Monday 1, we are writing 1, okay. Now assume that we are going to print the value, just you can see. Just you can see. It is printing all the case, it is printing the value. Now try to understand, try to understand. Just you can see, try to understand what is the important point. Now assume that if you are writing one program, if you are writing one program, okay, and now assume that if you are going to use only this week in inside some particular function, not throughout the program, but you are going to use inside this bracket. After that bracket braces, you are not going to use this weekday. So this is same like your data type. So as for example, here you have created one day data type that life of this day data type is only beside inside this braces. After this braces, if you are going to write day, it will not work. After the braces, if you are going to write it day, it will not work. Actually, I am giving you idea. I am giving you the idea about the local and global that we have already discussed in the previous class. That's why now assume that if you are going to write the same thing here, what is the output you will get? Anyone. What is the output you will get? Anyone. If you are writing printer percentile get day, 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 what is the output you will get? If day equal to Wednesday, what is the output you will get here? Anyone? Error. Error. Why? Error. Because the life of this enum is only inside this process. So you can also control the region. Where you are going to use, you can only use for that purpose. After that, you cannot use. Okay. But when you are writing has defined someone, then in this case, the life of this has defined it throughout the program. You cannot control this Monday one, but you can control this data type. You can control this data type. So that's why it is also called the enum data type. Now again, I'm going to repeat. You just try to understand. Okay. First one, these are the important points. First one, enum is your. I have already mentioned has defined means instead of writing pi s square, pi r s square, here you can write has defined pi equal to 3.14. Okay. So in this case, it becomes easy to write the program. When you are writing area of circle, simply you can write pi r square. There is no need to write 3.14 something. Okay. Now, first one, enum is a user defined data type. This is the first point. Enum is a user defined data type. 
okay what is the in use of in basically it will allocate constant value to the variable basically it will allocate constant value to the variable okay now after that by default enum will start from zero it will write zero one two three something like that but you can write any value but when you are writing here value 10 the next value will start from the previous value plus one so the next value friday will start from the 10 plus one next value friday we will start from the 10 plus one okay next one next one if you are not writing here Monday equal to 1, by default it will start from 0 and here it is coming 3, then it will come 3. Then again if you are writing 3, then it will come 3 also. Means for the two different value, you can put the two same constant value. As for example, here you can see we are putting the same constant value 3 and 3. We are putting the same constant value 3 and 3. We can write also Monday equal to minus 1, minus 2, we can write any value. Okay. So now you can see this is your enum data type and here if you are going to check what is the value it will print a anyone what is the value so as for example we have created enum here so by default this value becomes 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 something like that and if you are going to print the value here simply we are writing i equal to jan i equal to jan means i equal to 0 i is smaller than december means basically this value is coming to 11 so it will print the value 0 1 2 3 4 something like that it will print 11 value same like that here you can write in the 2 the next value will start from 3 so it will become 3 4 5 6 7 something like that clear something like that this is your enum data okay now we are going to excuse me sir how to initialize the value okay whatever the question we will discuss after 9 50 okay whatever the question related to the enum we will discuss after 9.50, okay? Yes, we cannot sir. use the equal to operator. When you are writing hash defined, we cannot use your equal to operator. Okay, okay, just to be last, what is your doubt in enum? Please ask. Sir, uh, can enum be made unsigned integer? Unsigned, you can unsign, basically we are not, enum is a, itself is a one data type. I have already mentioned, enum is a same like the integer, same like float, same like double, but this enum is a user defined data type. We are defining this data type enum day. This enum day become your data type, means where we are going to, how to create any variable of integer, anyone. If you are going to ver create variable a for integer, what we are writing, int a. Same like that here, what we are writing, enum day d. What do you mean by that? We have created one d of type enum day. We have created one d of type enum day. What is your enum day? Enum day is a user defined data type. User defined data type. So here you can put any integer constant value, you can put character value, but you cannot put any float value. Clear? Yes, sir. sir. But we can't make that uh, values to be only positive or on, le, that cannot be happening. Sunday can no. also be minus 2, but we can't no, make that two, only positive. We can positive. also write minus 2. Okay, sir. Based on our requirement, we have to write here. Based on our requirement, we can write. Okay. Now we are going for the next one. How can we slide the value? Okay, Abhishek Sa, can you tell me what do you mean by enum? Anyway, Abhishek Sa, can you tell me what do you mean by enum? What do you mean by enum? Abhishek Sa, I am asking you, just to explain me, what do you mean by enum? Sir, it creates a data type where we can store integer and character values but not float. Hmm. Then why you are asking the long enum is what? What, what is the use? What do you mean by enum? Enum is a user defined data type. We are defining our own data type. Then why you are asking long enum? We can write long enum. What do you mean by that long enum? No, sir. We we were writing long end. So like I was thinking that we can store integer values. So like can we store here long enum like that? Thing? No, no. Ju just you can see when you are writing here enum is it will only allocate this value. So what is the use of writing long enum? Enum is basically used to store the value 0 to 11. Whatever the constant, whatever the value you have given, it will only store the constant value. It is not used to store the any types of value. Integer, when you are writing integer, it will store the value minus 2 to the power something to 2 to the power something. But in this case, basically, when you are talking about the enum, 
basically it will store basically only this value with the logic only this value with the logic clear now i am so to, if we uh, give yeah. january or something to a very big integer value like which will require 8 bytes will it still hold that value sir enum yeah it will hold that value yes sir If we store A in Monday, then will it store B in Tuesday? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? A in Monday, then you have to write B equal to Tuesday. It will store the value, whatever the value of A num here. If you are going to write Tuesday equal to three, if you are writing B equal to Tuesday, it will store the value three. This is a simple one. Okay. Now you can see we are going to di discuss about the how to assign the value, how to assign the value. Okay. So, as for example, you already know how to create the variable. So, if you are writing float x comma p, what do you mean by that? Anyone float x comma p means basically we are going to declare the two different variable. Basically, we are going to declare two different variable of type float. Basically, we are going to declare two different variable of type float. One is called the x, and second one is called the p. Okay, and both type is basically used to store the real number. So, this is your x, and this is your same like that if you are writing double y comma q basically we are going to create the two different variable y and one is your q of type double same like that if you are writing unsigned unsigned means basically it is unsigned integer so it will create one variable of unsigned integer same like that when you are going for the normal integer this is called a normal integer or also called the signed integer normal integer also called the signed integer when you are writing the long integer we have already discussed in the previous class what is the meaning of long integer and what is the meaning of long long integer after that we are going to put the value x equal to 1.2.1 y equal to this one k equal to this one p equal to q equal to 1.0 just you can see how we are writing this value okay so here you can see what we are writing here first we are writing float x comma p so float basically used to store the real number and here we are writing x equal to this value so it will store this value to the x same like that if you are writing y equal to y comma q it will store this value to the y it will store this value to the y okay so y is basically called the double so it will store whatever the value you are writing here it will store this value to the y same like that if you are writing k equal to 5 4 3 2 1 and here you are taking the unsigned integer means basically used to store the positive integer basically used to store the positive integer it is not used to store the any negative integer so in this case first we have to find what is the size of this k in our system okay so as for example if the k is taking four bytes of memory then maximum value we can store 2 to the power 32 minus 1 that we have already discussed if you are giving any value greater than 2 to the power 32 minus 1 then in this case it will follow one type of cycle in this case it will follow one type of cycle okay and these are the print that we will discuss when we will discuss about the printf function at that time we will discuss how to print the integer value so you have to write percentile d if you are going to print the long integer value you have to write the percentile in d if you are going to print the long long integer value then you have to write percentile lld so that we will discuss during the printf function okay so when we will discuss about the printf function at that time we will discuss about the this one this is called the format specified means what value you are going to print same like that if you are writing point one two lf okay point one two lf what do you mean by that after this point it will print the 12 different decimal value up to 12 different decimal value it will print if you are writing point one two lf so that we will discuss during the printf function, in the printf function, we will discuss different type of specifier. So, if you are going to print character value, what value you will write? If you are going to print float value, what value you will write? If you are going to print sort integer, what value you will write? If you are going to print unsigned integer, what value you will write? So, that we will discuss during the printf function. But here you can see how to mislike, how to store the value, how to store the value. Okay. So, that you will see how to store this value. Okay. So, if you are writing integer m equal to this one, in this case, why we are getting minus one point, minus one one two one five anyone. If you are going to print the value, if m equal to five four three two one, and here we are getting the output equal to this one. Can you tell me why we are getting the output equal to this one? Anyone? 
out of range and it follows cycle yeah so this is out of range so it will follow one types of circle it will follow one types of circle so that we have already discussed during the number system okay now we are going to the most important part that is called the operator most important part that is called the operator this is very important part okay so now we can see it. so first we already know the basic types of operator plus basically used to find the addition of two number x plus y equal to if we are x equal to 15 y equal to 6 what is the value of x plus y the x plus y equal to 15 plus 6 you will get 21 same like that if you are writing minus means that is what is the value of x minus y 15 minus 6 that is called the 9 into means multiplication 15 into 6 if you are getting 90 Division means it will only return the quotient value. So if you are writing 15 divided by 6, it will only return the integral part. It will not return the float part. Okay. This is also a very important point. Okay. Whatever the value you are going to use. As for example, this is an integer. This one is also an integer. Then whatever the expression you are going to write, the output is always integer. Okay. Just you can see what I am saying. If A is your integer. B, B is also integer. Whatever the expression we are going to write based on A and B, the output is also integer. So A plus B is also integer. A minus B is also integer. A into B is also integer. A divided by B is also integer. A modular division B is also integer. So by default, it will always return in the integer value. So as for example, if you are writing 5 divided by 3, it will return in the value 1. It will not return in the value 1 point something. It will only return in the integral Value. Okay, so division means it will only return the quotient value and modular division it, it, it will return you the remainder value. In case of division, this is also very important point. In case of division, basically we are writing here sine 1 number 1, sine 2 number 2. Just you can say sine 1 number 2. First, what I have mentioned, just you can see. If both is your integer, then it will return integer value. If both is your integer, then it will return integer value. First, we will focus on this point. After that, I will explain you every concept. First, we will focus on this point. After that, I will explain you every concept. Okay. Now, you can see. So, if you are writing here sign, sign and sign 1, sign 1 and sign 2. So, as for example, sign 1 is your plus and sign 2 is your negative then output will come negative. If the sine 2 is sine 1 is minus and this one is plus, then the output will come negative. If both is your negative, then the output will come positive. If both is your positive, then the output will also come positive. Okay. What do you mean by that? Can you tell me what is the value of 5 by 3 minus 5 by 3, 5 divided by minus 3 minus 5 by minus 3. Can you tell me first one what value it will come? 1. Second one, minus one. Third one, minus one. And fourth one, it will come one. Fourth one, it will come. Okay. Now, modular division. Modular division you can only apply when the both the values are integer. Modular division you cannot apply for float value. Means you cannot write 5.5 modular division 5. You cannot, this is an invalid or this is a syntax error. You can apply when both is your integer. A is your integer, B is your integer. Then you can apply the modular division. Otherwise, you cannot apply the modular division. This is the most important point. Modular division you can only apply when both operates. This is also called the operates. Both operate must be integer. Okay. Then you can apply the modular division. Okay. Now, next important point. The sign of the result is totally depend upon the sign of the first value that is called the A. The sign of the result is totally depend upon the sign of the first value. So, as for example, if you are writing 5 modular division 3 minus 5 modular division 3. 5 modular division minus 3, minus 5 modular division minus 3. What is the value we will get here? 2. This one you have minus 2, 2 and this one will come minus 2. Because the sign of this result will totally depend upon the sign of the first number. It will not depend upon the sign of the second number. It will not depend upon the sign of the second number. Clear? Clear? So what I have mentioned, the modular division only you can apply for the integer operates. You cannot apply for the real number. You cannot apply for the float. 
but you can only apply for the integer as well as character because character is equivalent to integer. So if you are writing here character A, that is equivalent to your 97. That is equivalent to one integer constant 97. So modular division can only apply for the integer value or character value. You cannot apply for any other type of value. Okay. Just you can see, so first one you already know, plus you can apply for any types of data type, real number, any number you can apply. Second one, minus you can apply for any one, into you can apply for any one, division you can apply for any one, and modular division you can only apply for the integer, and we already know what is the sign of the modular. In the case of modular division, the sign will totally depend upon the sign of first number. It will not depend upon the sign of second number. It will only depend upon the sign of number. So as for example, 5 modular division 3, it will give you the 2. Minus 5 modular division 3, it will give you the minus 2. It will give you the minus 2. Okay. It will give you the minus 2. Okay. So if you are talking about the answer equal to 0, so if you are writing 2 modular division 2, then it, it will become 0 because the remainder equal to 0. It will give you the 0. It will give you the 0. Okay, next one, what I mentioned in the case of division or in the case of any operator, in the case of any operator, if you are writing in case of any operator, 0 minus into division and modular division only for the integer. We are talking about this one. Okay, in case of this operators plus minus into and division. Okay. A modular division B, it will only return you the remainder value. It will only return you the remainder value. Okay. And the sign of this result will totally depend upon the sign of A. The sign of this result will totally depend upon the sign of A. Okay. Now here you can see. So here I have already mentioned if you are taking the both operands equal to integer. If A is your integer and B is also integer, the output is always integer. Output is always integer. If any one is your float, if any one is your real number, then the output become real number. If any one is your float, then the output become your float. So as for example, if you are writing 1.5.0, the output will come 6.0. If you are writing 1.0 divided by 2, the output will become 0 0.5. It will not come 0. It will only come when you are writing 1 divided by 2, it will come 0 because both is your integer. If any one is your float, then the output become float in the case of division. Try to understand what I am saying. If in case of division, if both operate, both values your integer, then in this case, output is always integer. Output is always integer. If any one of the values float, then the output will come your real number. Then the output is your real number. It will come float number. Clear? It will come float number. Okay. So as for example, if you are writing a equal to minus 1, b equal to minus 3, what is the value of a divided by b? Anyone? What is the value of a divided by b? If you are writing a equal to minus 11 and b equal to minus 3, what is the value of a divided by b? Anyone? Anyone? What is the value we get? Minus, minus 3 or plus 3? Plus 3. Plus, plus 3. three. Why? Because I have already mentioned if both sign is your negative, then the output is your positive. If both sign is your positive, output is your positive. If any one of the sign is negative, then the output is your negative. Second one, A modular division B, what is the value we will get? A modular division B, what is the value we will get? Anyone, what is the value we will get? What is the value we will get? Minus 2 because the output will totally depend upon the sign of the first number. If first number is negative, output will get negative. We will not get positive. Next one, 15 divided by 10.0. Why we are getting 1.5? Anyone? 15 divided by 10.0. Why we are getting 1.5? Why? Because here 10.0, just you can see 10.0 is a real number of float number. So output will automatically float number. In the float number, you will get 1.5. So 1.5 is the output. 1.5. Even if you are writing 15.0 divided by 10, the output will get same. But when you are writing 15 divided by 10, what is the output you will get? 15 divided by 10, what is the output you will get? What is the output you will get? 
one. We will also always get one. Okay. So now we can see this is also called the implicit type conversion. Try to understand. When you are writing this one, 15 divided by 10.0, and you are getting the output equal to 1.5, this is called the implicit type conversion. Means automatically, this 15 is going to convert to 15.0 divided by 10.0. And here you are getting the 1.5. Here you are getting the 1.5. Okay, because automatically it is going to convert 15 to 15.0. Okay. Now, when you are writing here 15 divided by 10, what is the value we are getting anyone? What is the value we are getting here? 10 divided by 3.0. What is the value it will give? It will give you the 3.33, something like that. It will give you the 3.33. If you are writing 15 divided by 10, what is the value we'll get? What is the value we'll get? Yes. Sir, 10 divided by 3.0, sir, it is giving 3.333. Yes. Sir, but how many did it? No, In that will not point. That will point. totally depend upon your system. That will totally depend upon your system. Okay. So here you cannot get the unique value. Some system you will get 3.56. Some system you will get 3.66. Something like that. Okay. So now you can see if you are writing 15 divided by 10, what is the value we are getting? We are getting 1. Okay. Because both is your integer, so output we are getting integer. But when you are writing here float, try to understand. When you are writing the bracket float, this is also called the explicit type conversion. If you are writing your black bracket float 15 divided by 10, means automatically bracket float 15 means this one become 15.0. This one become 15.0. So if it is coming 15.0, what is the output you will get? If you are writing explicit type, now we do that. If you are writing 15.10, both is your integer, so output you will get 1. Okay, you will not get 1.5. But now assume that if your requirement is to get 1.5. If your requirement is to get 1.5, try to understand. Here A is coming integer, B is your integer, and now assume that your requirement is to get float number. How to write? Try to understand. If A is an integer, and if you are writing A divided by B, you will get only integer value. Try to understand. You will get, just we will see, I am going to explain it. Try to understand. Before understanding, you are asking the question. This is your problem. This is your problem. Try to understand. Now assume that if you are going to use A and B, both is your integer. This is also integer. This one is also integer. Clear? Okay. Now, in this case, now assume that if your requirement to, to, is to get float output when you are going to write A divided by B. Can you tell me any procedure to get the float output? Anyone? Any procedure, if you have no any idea about the bracket float, if you have no any idea about the bracket float, can we write, can we write something like that? A divided by B point zero. Can we write? Can we write? Can we write A no. divided by B point zero? We cannot write this one. We cannot write A divided by B point zero. We can only write with the number B point zero is not a B point zero. When we are writing B point zero, that we consider as one type of variable. We cannot write. We cannot write. So in this case, what will happen like that? We, are, we have to use some explicit type casting, okay? Or explicit type conversion. What we will use here? Float A. So when we are writing float A, means automatically if the A is containing 10, then float A basically become 10.0. Float A basically become 10.0. Zero. There, float A basically become 10.0. So in this case, basically output you will get in terms of float. Okay. Now, if you are working for the simple only the value 5 divided by 2, and if you are writing 2.0, automatically it will give you the output as a 2.5 because automatically it is going to convert this value to the 5.0. Automatically it is going to convert this value to the 5.0. This is called the implicit type conversion. Implicit means automatically it is going to convert. And second one is called the explicit type conversion means forcefully you are doing the conversion. Forcefully you are making A to flow. Okay. Now we are getting one question. What is the output we will get? One question, one student is asking for 15 divided by 10 into 1.0. What is the output we will get? Anyone. We cannot write, we cannot write B.0 because B is a variable name. We cannot write B.0. There is no any operator called dot. What is the output we will get? 
So first we'll find the value one of this zero. expression. What is the value of this expression? 15 divided by 10. 1. 1 into 1.0. Here we are using the implicit type. Output become 1.0. 1, not 1. 1.0 is the right output. So output will get 1.0 or you can say 1.000 something like that. 1.000 something like that. Okay. Now, second one we are going to discuss about the logical operator. So when you are writing the if condition, basically we are using these types of operator. Basically we are using these types of operator. Okay. So first one you are less than. Second one you are less than equal to. Fourth one you are greater than. Greater than equal to. Double equal to and not equal to. Okay. And not equal to. 5 divided by 4.0. What is the output you will get? Anyone. What is the output you will get? What is the 5 divided by 4? What is the 5 divided by 4? If you are getting the exact value, then you will get the value. 5 divided by 4, 1.25 is the right answer. 1.25 is the right answer. When you will get the different answer, when you are not getting the exact value. As for example, someone will ask you. Just you will write here. 1 divided by 3. What is the output you will get? 1 divided by 3. What is the value of 1 divided by 3? Just you will write. 1 divided by 3. 1 divided Zero. by 3. What is the value you will get? I am asking one question. 1 divided by 3. What is the output you will get? 1 divided by 3, 0. Now, I think that we are talking about the float number. Float number. 1.0 divided by 3. What is the output you will get? 1.0 divided by 3. What is the output you will get? Just you can see. Just you will check the chat box. Some student is giving 0 0.33 and now the same thing. 1.0 divided by 2. 1.0 divided by 2. What is the output you will get? 1.0 divided by 2. What is the output you will get? 0 0.5. All are saying the same answer. Just we see. All are saying the same answer. Why? Because we are getting the exact value of 1 divided by 2. 1.0 divided by 2. You are getting the exact value of 1. But in the case of 1.0 divided by 3, we are not getting the exact same in the compiler also it will follow. Okay. Now you can see. So here basically we are going to write less than. Less than means basically it will check whether the value is less than or equal to this one or not. So as for example now we are going to write a greater than or a we are taking 5 and b we are taking 6. Okay. Or b we are also taking 5. Now if you are writing a less than b. This one will return you the false value. Why? Because here it will only check whether the value of A is smaller than B or not. But when you are writing a smaller than equal to B, it will return you the true value. Because here the value of A is either a smaller than or equal to. Either a smaller than or equal to. So basically we are writing the less than equal to. We cannot write equal to less. That is a different one. We cannot write equal to less. That is the different one. We always write less than equal to. Equal to less 5. If you are writing this one become a equal to a smaller than 5. If you are writing a equal to less than 5. This one become a single equal to a smaller than 5. So we cannot write this statement. We will only write this one. A greater than b. What is the statement we will get? False. A greater than equal to B. It will check whether the value of A is greater than or equal to B. So in this case, it will return true statement. A double equal to B. It will check the value. When the values are same, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. A not equal to B. It will return true when the values are not same. And it will return false when the values are same. So this is a simple one. Okay. A less than B. A less than this one. No, we cannot use for the string. We cannot use for the string. That we will discuss. We are not talking about the string. We are only talking about the character float and integer. Print a smaller than, then in this case, it will return you 0 or 1. Okay. So if you are going to print the value, integer value, then false means it will come 0 and true means it will come 1. Okay. And the rest we have already discussed. So as for example, if you are using the non-zero value, non-zero value, that will consider a true statement and if you are using zero value that will consider as a false statement that will consider as a false statement okay now next one next one we are going for the operator this is the most important part called the logical and and logical or just you can see what do you mean by this operator logical and and logical or so basically we are using to join the two logical op operation basically and 
and or it basically used to join the two logical operation logical operation means logical operation means here we are going to use the logical operator what are the logical operator less than greater than greater than equal to less than equal to double equal to not equal to okay if you are not using this logical expression then in this case whatever the value if you are getting the non zero value that will consider as a true and if you are getting zero value that will consider as a false okay that will consider as a false now you can see the important point so now we are writing here we can only apply for the two logical operations so we are writing logical operation one logical operation two and the output we are logical and then two now can you tell me what is the output of logical operation what are the output of logical operation anyone if you are using equal to not equal to greater than greater than equal to what are the possible value will get for the output anyone what are the possible value will get for the output only zero and one okay means if you are taking two logical operation you will get only four combination zero 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 one one zero one one Zero zero means this one will come zero. Zero one and zero means zero. One means one. So L one and L two means it will return true when both is your true. If any one of the L one is false, you will get the output equal to false. Okay. Now can you tell me what is the output you will get when you are writing zero and L two? Any one. What is the output you will get? What is the output you will get? Zero and L two. What is the output you will get? Zero means we are not going to ask you what is the value of L two. If any one value is coming zero, if first value is zero, definitely your result will not depend upon your second value. This is the most important point. Point most 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 important point. Just try to understand. If the first value is zero, it will not depend upon the second value. The result will not depend upon the second value. Directly, we will give the output equal to zero. Same procedure we are going to follow in the compiler also, or the same procedure the compiler will also follow. If the first expression is coming as a false, it will not execute the second expression. It will not execute the second expression. What do you mean by that? If we are writing a. Equal to ten, and you are writing b equal to twenty. Try to understand. A equal to ten, b equal to twenty. If you are writing a greater than twelve and b single equal to thirty, what do you mean by single equal to means? We are going to change the value of b to thirty. Single equal to means thirty. Single equal to and double equal to both are different. What is the difference? Anyone? B double equal to thirty. What do you mean by that? B double equal to thirty means anyone. B double equal to thirty. What do you mean by that? We are going to compare the value of B with thirty. If both the values are same, then it will return one. Otherwise, it will return zero. But when we are writing B single equal to thirty means basically we are going to write thirty to the B. Okay. Now here you can see A greater than twelve. Condition is true or false? Condition is true or false? Condition A, ten greater than twelve. Condition is false. If the condition is false, it will not execute this expression. Means after that, if you are going to print the value of A comma B, the value of B is only twenty. It will not print the value of B equal to thirty because this expression is not going to execute it with the first one equal to false. But now assume that if you are writing A is greater than equal to nine, that in this case definitely it will give you the value. To thirty, okay. So if any question is coming related to the AND operator, first you have to check whether the first expression true or false. If the first expression is coming false, try to understand. If the first expression is coming false, it will not execute the second expression. It will not execute the second expression. Same like that. If you are going for or L one or L two, this is the last one. L one or L two. Then in this case, L one, L two, we are writing zero one one zero. Zero one one zero 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 one one. In this case, it will return true if any one is true. So any one means this one is true. It will return one one zero one zero zero. It will return zero one one. It will return one. If any one of the value is one, it will return one. Now assume that if you are writing one or L two, what is the output you will get? One or L two, what is the output you will get? Any one. What is the output you will get? One or L two. If the first statement is true, 
can we check the value of l2 no we will not check the value of l2 so in this case the output will come one same like that in the case of or operator the first statement is true it will not execute the second expression it will not execute the second expression if the first expression is true means as for example if you are writing a equal to 12 b equal to 20 and if you are writing a greater than 10 or b equal to 30 then in this case it will not execute this expression because this expression is coming true okay this expression is coming true yes it will assign because first it will start from here now assume that one student is asking this question a equal to single equal to 20 and b is smaller than 30 okay then in this case already it will start from this side so what is the value of a a become 20 now 20 is can see what is the value this one expression is true or false anyone a equal to 20 is a true or false expression anyone a single equal to 20 is a true or false true why because we are getting the non-zero value so this is a true statement okay if this is a true statement definitely we will go and check b is smaller than 30 or not if this is coming false then we will give the output okay so same like that in the case of or if you are writing one and l2 the output you will get l2 so now i am going to write the all the expression just you can see zero and l2 output equal to zero one and l2 output equal to l2 zero or l2 output equal to l2 one or l2 output equal to one if we are going to write a equal to zero the second expression will not execute because a equal to zero is a false statement a equal to zero is a false statement clear so now after that if we are going for not this is a logical not what do you mean by that if your expression is true and if you are writing not a greater than two then this one become false so false to true true to false so not means basically used to convert a true to false and false to true okay so in the next class we will see some more types of operator and the next class we will see the precedence of the operator that is the most important point so we will see about this one and we will solve some question Regarding in your exam, definitely some question will come from the precedence and associativity. Okay. So in the next class, we'll see some problem related to this operator. So next class is the most, most important class because you will discuss about the increment operator, decrement operator. That is the most important part. If A equal to 10, just, just you will answer this question. A greater than 10, condition is true or false? Just you will tell me. Avishek sir, just will tell me a equal to 10, then a greater than 12, condition true or false. If the condition is false, then in this case it will not execute b equal to 30, it will not make, make b equal to 30. This is a common question. Sir, that we have already use, discussed. Sir, if we use or instead of and, so will it execute b equal to 30, right? Ha, b equal to 30, because in the or what we have mentioned, it will not execute when the first statement is true. Just we will see sometime when we are writing, at least we will check what I am writing. And based on that, we will ask the question. Okay, so next class is most, most important. If you are not going to attend the next class, means it's become very difficult to even get five marks out of 40. Even in the mid-same out of 40, it becomes very difficult to get five marks. Okay, so next two class is very, very, very important. Okay, if you are going to miss the next two class, means definitely you are missing the at least three to four grades. Okay, so next two class is very, very important. Whatever the class we have discussed, that is a very simple concept. But the next class is most, most important. Next two class. If you are going to miss, definitely you are missing your two or three grade in your final exam. Which identifiers are valid means? Which identifiers are valid means? Okay, so that I have already given you the reason. Identifier means when you are going to define any identifier, then in this case, the first one, the first character, either you can use the underscore or you can use any alphabet. Apart from that, you cannot use any other thing. Means you cannot use the first character as a number. You cannot use the first character as a dot or any other symbol. Based on that, we are finding, when you are defining that, Identify, you cannot put the two words, you can only put the single words. 
sir i have a question when uh, in yeah. division operation when yes. you give example of 1 divided by 3 whenever so the numerator is less than the denominator the answer will be zero yes zero yes zero and uh, 1.0 divided by 3 then why isn't it 0.0 Uh, why answer is zero point three? It will come because the first one become float. When you are writing one point zero, means first one become float. So output become real number. So in the real number, we can write zero point three three. But in the integer number, we cannot write zero point three three. We can only write zero. Oh, okay, sir, understood. Okay, so as for example, when we are writing one point one divided by three, so compiler has no any idea. What is your expectation? Compiler will assume like that if first one is your integer, second one is your integer, then the user is expecting integer, so they will give you the integer as output. But when you are writing 1.0 divided by 3, means the user has already idea about the real number. They can also expect the real number. That they will give you the 0.33. Understood, sir. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Size of if you are going to check the size of this one, size of Day data type simply you have to check what is the size it is coming. Uh, size of day. Normally I think it will come equal to integer because it is going to allocate integer constant. Four. So it is equal to size of integer. Size of enum equal to size of integer. 